What is going on, everyone? It is Tyler McKinney back here again, and we're going to go ahead and do this week's power rankings. We're going to go ahead and rank the teams from number eight to number one, and we're going to start off at the bottom here and at number nine. That's right, because I just feel like they don't deserve to be. Number eight is the Guardians, and what more can I say about it? I've kind of beat this dead horse enough it, that you've got bad coaching, bad play calling. You, uh, the O line is not very good. And that's kind of what's been hindering this team. I think if they can, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed, but you know, maybe they might win a game all season, but I've got them at number nine this week. Now, eh, maybe they might move up to number eight. We'll, we'll see. Now, moving up to number seven are the Vipers. And I feel like the Vipers are, they're starting to figure things out. This is a team that I think that's number seven right now. But as we get towards the middle of the season, as we get halfway through the season, you'll probably, they might even crack into the top four. I think that adding Brett Hundley is just a great thing for this team. It was a disaster of a night uh, on Saturday night, that game, everything that it was. But there was just no comparison. When Hundley came into the game, his command was just, I mean, nothing against Luis Perez. Luis Perez has managed many a team and done fairly well. But there, it, it just... Hundley took it to a new level, and I think he's going to take this team to a new level. But unfortunately, where they sit right now, they're number seven for me. Now, moving on to number six, then, it is the Dragons. The Dragons have arguably the best offense in the league. If you look at it by production, yards-wise, they are. The problem is, is that stats can tell us a lot, but they don't tell us everything. But yes, they do. Let let. let let me straighten all of that out, okay? So what do I mean by stats? Well, statistically, when you look at yards, this is the best team in, in the league. They, they are very, they're just very, very dynamic, but they don't score the most points. And statistically, looking at it, they kind of do give up the ball quite a bit, which is a big stat when it comes to whether or not teams are winning. So stats aren't everything, but they can tell us a whole lot. And so that's kind of where we're sitting is you've got a really dynamic, fun team to watch that's 0-2. Just is what it is. And that's your number six team with the Seattle Dragons. At number five, I've got Arlington. And they are just... They are another enigma. They're a team that just finds ways to get takeaways, to create turnovers that keep them in ball games, and that's why they are one and one right now. Their offense is completely dismal, but when you keep getting turnovers like they do and keep getting more chances, that's what happens. And this is a team that I can't really figure out. I think that they need to make some key changes at some key positions, especially the quarterback position. And I think that that might change the trajectory for this team. But right now they're sitting about right where they are in the middle of the pack. And I don't see things changing unless their offense change changes. I think that their defense is actually doing a fairly decent job. Moving on to number four, and I have the Brahmas in here. And this is another team that is, they are, they are kind of like in the race, the tortoise, and the hare. They are definitely the tortoise. Whereas the hare might be the dragons, they are the tortoise. They just keep going, keep coming, keep coming, and they keep adding a little bit more wrinkles. And you can see a lot of it has to do with the confidence that Jake Cohn is getting as he's going and as the coaching staff is kind of developing this offense. I think that they're going to be a fun one to kind of see. And as they continue on, you know, they're sitting at number four and I could easily see them being a shocking creeping into number two. As we get midway into the season, you look up and you're like, Oh, they're four and one. I mean, legitimately that's the way that this team is. They're a solid team. I think the way that, you know, Heinz Ward runs this team, uh, the just the the personality of this team is is a it's a bend don't break type of a defense you know they they do a lot of the things right they play smart ball and a lot of it is is that they don't get you know they don't turn over the ball a lot and 
that's what will happen, especially in this league when everybody else seems to be turning over the ball, at least a majority of the rest of the league. So, you know, hats off to the Brahmas. And the other thing, too, is they've got a huge fan base. So this is going to be one that as the season progresses, I think that, like, you know, it'll be interesting to see how packed they can get that place towards, you know, the latter home games. I mean, it'll really turn into a, a home, uh, you know, a really a home field advantage for them as they continue to go on. And number three, now this is kind of where things get a little hairy and dicey. And I, listen, I'm going to be a spoiler here. The Roughnecks are my number one. So really right in here, it's the battle between the Battle Hawks and the DC Defenders. But I have a little bit of an edge for the uh, Battle Hawks right now to where in that number three slot, just sliding in there just underneath the Battle Hawks, I have the Defenders. And a lot of it has to do with the uncertainty on the offense. The weather did not do them justice on on Saturday, and, and a lot of it had to do because they ended up having to run. And it was good that they had the ability to run, but I don't necessarily know if that's the best place for them where they need to be as the season progresses and it goes on. Now, the cool thing about Jordan Tayamu is he finally decided to be the 2020 Jordan Tayamu and actually run the ball. You know, he he's kind of been playing this, you know, pocket passer, running when he has to and, and not really putting, not putting much effort into running, just kind of getting what he needs. He is a dynamic player. They need, he has a very good arm. And, and I'm not taking anything away from his arm. But if there's no threat for him to run the ball, then the teams aren't going to be king and he's not going to get those opportunities that he got in 2020, which made him one of the more sought after guys. So if he can continue to run like he did on Saturday, this will be his job and he'll solidify it. But just the uncertainty there is really kind of the thing for me that has them at the number three slot and not the number two. And number two slot, which it was, it was really a toss up for me. The Battle Hawks, man, this is a team that has like they are comeback kid with two big comeback wins week, two weeks in a row. AJ McCarron playing his uh, playing his tail off, being the leader on this team. Really, everybody coming around. I've got them sitting in at at number two here. And when you look at it, the two teams that they've beat kind of stack up a little bit better than the teams that the defenders have beat. And, and two, this is a team that knows who they are. They've got a good identity and, and their leaders are really, really pushing forward and leading. Whereas with the Brahmas, you know, they're developing their leaders that we're starting to see, oh, you know, it's the lights are coming on and clicking and going. Whereas the leaders really for the Battle Hawks have really just taken things by the horn and guys are following and they're all buying into it and they're just full steam ahead and they just keep pulling out the wins. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that where that takes them as the season progresses. But right now where we sit, I just, I feel like, I just feel like number two, that, that just fits for them. I don't know. And it might be that, you know, I'm starting to become an AJ McCarron fan too. I, I, I don't know. You can tell me, you know, if I'm right or wrong down in the comment section, oh, we'll, we'll continue that on down there. But moving on to number one, it's the rough next. And you know, before it was in 2020, it was the offense here. It's this defense this defense with let me let me check real quick because i can't remember if it's 12 or 13 sacks it's just a ridiculous amount of sacks it doesn't really matter right um yeah so sacks 12 total yeah and the next closest team has seven so they have five more sacks than anybody else and they have they have uh 12 sacks on the season in two games it, it's just it, it's crazy and not not to mention that they have right now the roughnecks looking at um interceptions they have four the most that anybody else has is two uh just the list goes on the, this defense is just unreal and they've been getting actually fairly decent production from their offense as long as their offense can figure out these turnover issues that they have they're going to be con they're going to continue to blow teams out if they can really secure the ball and and not give up the ball on offense their defense isn't going to have to do as much oh man look out there isn't going to be a chance for any team to beat them i mean they 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 could go 10 and 0 that's how good this team is playing and, and how well they're doing. And a lot of it has to do with how focused they can stay for a whole season. And that we'll see where it is. But really, like people say, and this is coming from an offensive guy, so it's really it's hard for me to it's hard for me to say this, but 
defense wins championships, and we're starting to see it here. So there you have it. There are my teams going ahead and going from the bottom. I've got number nine, the Guardians, number seven, Vipers, number six, the Dragons, number five, I've got the Renegades, number four, the Brahmas, number three, the Defenders, number two, Battlehawks, and number one, the Roughnecks. As always, let me know your comments down in the comment section, and we'll continue the conversation on down there. All right, guys, listen, I know that you're busy, and I know that I'm busy, so let's get on out of here. You have a good night. Bye.